So David, what's this about Reman can be better than new? Yeah, this is an idea that uh, emerged out of a conversation with Stefan Narditi from EEB in Brussels. Yeah. And all the remanufacturing companies had said to us, our products after remanufacture are as good as new. Right. And he said, that's great, but surely they're better than new because of all the other advantages, the smaller carbon footprint. We don't have to do any more mining for those products. Mm -hmm. They're very resource efficient. So, okay, they're as good as new. I say they're better than new. Lower oh, energy? Lower energy, yeah. much lower energy. So yeah. in most cases. Yeah. So uh, I like that idea. I'm inclined to adopt it and say... You heard it here first. Yeah. Reman products better than new. Hashtag better than new. Love it. Hello and welcome to uh, Delft, where we're going to talk more about remanufacturing. And I'm joined by David. David, tell us, tell us about yourself very briefly and tell us what is remanufacturing in your view? Will do. Hi, Dave. Uh, really nice to be here at TU Delft. Thanks for the invitation. Um, so for the record, I'm David Fitzsimons. I'm the director of the European Remanufacturing Council based in Brussels. And um, I guess the first question is why remanufacturing? Why is it important? Why is it growing in importance? Well, I find the first thing we should say is that we differentiate from recycling. Most legislation is written to encourage products to be collected, smashed up, and the material sent for recycling. Mm. Remanufacturing is taking the components or the whole product through an industrial process where they're disassembled mm. and then are put back onto the market as new, so it's as, literally as good as new mm. as the original product. So mm. it's one product, two lives, sometimes more than two lives. That's okay. what remanufacturing is about. Okay. And the European Remanufacturing Council represents companies that are doing that or are sympathetic to that. So we've got this European Remanufacturing Council. Yep. How, was that, how did that evolve? Where did that come from? Well, that all began um, with a project called the European Remanufacturing Network, the ERN. Okay. Um, and all the outputs from that are at www.remanufacturing.eu. Okay. Um, and that was a Horizon 2020 funded project where we wanted to bring together... Sorry, that's it, Horizon 2020. That's funded by the European that's Union. That's funded by the European oh, okay, Union. Okay, okay. Exactly, an yeah. EU funded project yeah. to bring together those researchers around Europe who are working on remanufacturing so that we could coordinate that activity for these outputs. So okay. we could understand just how big is remanufacturing in Europe. And one of the important outputs from that work was that we know that it's, it, remanufacturing is worth about 30 billion euros wow. uh, in Europe, very yeah. comparable to the United States actually, similar sort of size, about 2% okay. of manufacturing, quite small, mm. but nevertheless not insignificant, no, no. with massive potential to grow thereafter. And at the end of that process, the European Commission were keen for us to form a business-led organization to represent the many sectors in which remanufacturing happens, yeah, yeah. automotive, marine, off-road vehicles, defense, um, ICT. Consumer stuff. Consumer stuff as well, but okay. mostly, mostly remanufacturing is in this B2B space, business to business. Business to business, yeah. company Rather to company. business to consumer. Okay. But the growth potential, I think, is in that B2C space in okay. the future. So, I mean, this, this, it's a convincing story, but this, this council that you're representing, what, what do you do? How, how are you helping this? What, how are you involved? So we've only started, uh, we're a year old at the moment. Um, we were inspired to bring members together by the American Remanufacturing Council. Mm. But we're that, that's interesting, mm. that it's driven from America as well, this circular economy thing we don't always, yep. first of all, think about America, but this is a good example where America has really done some great work. Yeah, they were very in, early into recognizing. Our friends up in Rochester Institute of Technology. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. 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 
Uh, so they inspired us yeah. with uh, uh, early moves in this area. Mm. And they were also very conscious of um, the National Key Lab in uh, China, mm. in Beijing, mm. uh, where they too have recognized the potential for remanufacturing, mm. uh, in particular at scale, at a global scale. Mm. Because remanufacturing as practiced in the last few decades is typically, not always, mm. but typically quite small scale. Mm. Um, now, the, we, we all know that in business, you want to get the, the, the scale often brings you cost advantages. Mm, mm, economies of scale, so economies of scale mm. can drive all sorts of possibilities. Mm. And uh, I think that's where ambition in China is coming from. Mm. Can they organize remanufactured products through return supply chains, mm. not just locally, but globally, mm. using these... Um, containers that are often empty when they've discharged their goods in Europe mm. or the States mm. to get back product to China for remanufacturing. Yeah. Now, is that going to happen? I think the, we're not sure about that yet, mm. but um, th there are a lot of ambitious people looking at trying to do that on a global scale. So your work as well, and many of us involved in this, one of the things we know is if we get more companies together, talking to each other, sharing yep. ideas, sharing what they're doing. Yep. There can be big benefits there. Yeah, that's, thanks, Dave. That's, that, that, thanks, <laughs> thanks for the prompt on that. I, mean, I, mean, I think that the, point about the, the, the point about the council is that uh, we're bringing different sectors together. Because yeah. if you go to the automotive sector, yeah. there's a lot of remanufacturing going on for different components, turbochargers, brake calipers, engines, etc. Yeah. In the automotive sector, yeah. They become very expert and inward looking in the automotive sector. Mm. But how about the wind turbine sector? Yeah. Now, the wind turbine sector, you'll take gearboxes mm. back for remanufacturing, yeah. and they're going to look much bigger, but very similar to some of the learning from the automotive sector. Yeah. How about the marine sector? Yeah. How about the ICT sector mixing with the automotive sector Which for remanufacturing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we're increasingly seeing the automotive product change yeah, yeah. There's lots of learning there. And our first uh, meeting for members was in Paris at the end of uh, November 20. So sorry, who are these members? They're members member of Member companies, your... member companies. Oh, so they join your council, then you are able to offer network and events and... And bring them together. Fantastic. So let okay. me give you an example of yeah. that. Yeah. Um, that first members meeting was at the IBM offices in Paris. Wow. And we had the OECD speaking to us about their policy work. Very interestingly, we had IBM presenting on Watson and artificial intelligence. Mm. Now, for a lot of the remanufacturing companies in the room, mm. that might have been their first experience of working through what the implications might be of mm. artificial intelligence for remanufacturing. Mm. And that creates a whole lot of new thought processes and products and possibilities and opportunities. Yeah. Now, that's our job. Yeah, yeah. The only way we're going to be seen to be successful is if we get 30 billion euros of sales in Europe to 100 billion euros of sales. And that means business development. That means growth. That means more jobs in remanufacturing.